everyone, and welcome back to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, along with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. As we sit here in the middle of January, we're nearing the end of the first half of the Summit League Conference basketball season. North Dakota State will get basically the whole week off. They don't play again until Sunday when they're in Indianapolis at Kolpak's former favorite stop in the jungle, even though they don't play there anymore, at IUPUI against the Jaguars, the team right in front of them in the Summit League standings. There's a three-way tie for second. The biggest news coming down earlier this morning, Jeffrey, is that Carlin Dupree, two weeks removed from quitting the Bisonman's basketball team, is back on the roster. Initially, there was a dispute over playing time. Even though Dupree was high up there in minutes, he started 14 of the first 17 games. Uh, he and Dave Richmond chatted it over. He's back on the squad. He's not going to play right away. From what Richmond told me, suspended indefinitely, and it was, it was phrased a little bit differently in the press release today. This whole, we haven't had a chance to talk about it here on the blog. Your thoughts on how this all went down? Well, I, I think when you talk about Carlin Dupree and you talk about a, a guy who is, uh, I think, a vital part of this team, mm -hmm. but, you know, this is a team, and, that, and that's what uh, Richmond preaches all the time. It's that culture thing I think he's big on, and... If you're not part of that, uh, if you're not all in, it's, it's tough to uh, right. be part of the program. Now, kids make mistakes. They uh -huh. do. They're young. Th these are not 29-year-old men. They're 21, 22-year-old guys. And, and if he uh, made the apologies necessarily and, and said, I made a mistake, by all means, bring him back. You know, he's not going to play right away, right. right? He's suspended indefinitely. It's not like, you know, he'll be in the lineup right away. And I don't know how long indefinite is. I'd Guessing Coach Richmond doesn't right. know how long it definitely is. There, it's going to depend on how, how yeah. is he working in practice? Yeah. How is he hanging around with the guys? How is he interacting with everybody? How, is, how hard is he working? Yeah. You know, is he putting in more effort now? So um, I think you have to see all those factors play out in the next two, three weeks, and then perhaps we'll get a more clear idea of what it means. It's left open-ended in that case, but he has, and Richmond told us that he has to make a message that, you know, that quitting is not acceptable to his teammates and to the program. And I think that's something that you you mentioned this, that he's got to get ingratiated back into the roster, however that's going to happen, however long that's going to take. There's a possibility he may not play again the rest of the season. That that It's open-ended in that, in that aspect. They were 3-1 and one without him, too. That's so it's true. Not like, and beat uh, USD and SDSU. It's not like he's bringing them back and saying, you know, we need, we, we need we this need void. Right. Because when we were gone, when you were off the team, yeah. boy, we really suffered. They went 3-1, and one. Yep. they split on the road, they beat South Dakota State, they beat South Dakota, so it's not like, uh, you know, they really, it was a playing time issue, right. it was a total issue with the team chemistry, and okay, when we bring, if we bring you back, Carlin, these things are going to have to happen. Right. As we sit here, Sunday marks the end of the first half of the conference schedule. I told you this on the radio, I still believe this. I think it's a wide open race. Omaha's look good. But they're in their first year of eligibility. I think there's going to be some bumps along the road. Granted, they came and ended the NDSU's great home winning streak in early January. You agree with that? You think it's anybody's race when Absolutely. we get to some balls? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've never seen the Summit since we started covering it in 2009. It was the first Summit League tournament. I've never seen it this balanced. There's just not that team that you look at and go, wow, okay, these guys come tournament time are going to be the one team that yeah. you're going to have to look out for. South Dakota State's going to be right there. Well, they're at home almost at Sioux Falls. NDSU, is, I think, is going to be there. I think, I think Fort Wayne's going to be, Wayne's gonna be there. Yeah. You never can count out Oral Roberts yep. and Scott Sutton. I mean, there's a program that's uh, always pretty good year in and year so out. So you got four teams not even mentioning Omaha, in, in their, and, and you wonder about that. Yeah, could, they could be the NDSU of 09. Right. This is their first year of, of eligibility. You wonder also, too, Colpac, brand-new building. NDSU's going to go there in February. How much juice they got off of that. They've been looking forward to that for a long time, as we know with NDSU coming next year, that – they got, they're playing well. they got some good players up front. I'm curious to see how the second half of the schedule treats the, the map. I know you talk to people around the league, and they're pretty wary of Omaha because mm. Omaha has – it's a great location yep. for recruiting. It's got a, a nice tradition in the Omaha area for high school athletics. NDSU football can tell you about what <laughs> Omaha does for athletics. Yeah. And, uh, again, it's centrally located. I, I like their recruiting area. Their facilities are coming along, yeah. and uh, they could be – they could be something You already look at it in baseball, Jeff. They've been really good, even though they've been elig ineligible for the conference baseball tournament. They've been threatened to win that, and now you throw them with basketball. They're not going anywhere. I'm, a, I'm with you. I don't think they're going to go anywhere for a long time. No, I, I agree. I think uh, I look back. They got rid of football a few years yeah. ago, and I think they had to refocus some some energy within the department. You know, you have that hockey mechanism with the depart with the school. But basketball's coming up. Yeah. I think baseball's going to yeah. challenge all Roberts. Yeah, I really do, too. That'll be fun to watch in the spring. 
thing we know is going to be fun to watch this week is it's practice for football, Jeff, but we'll be watching on starting tomorrow when the Senior Bowl practice gets underway in Mobile, Alabama. Carson Wentz will be there. Joe Haig will be there. Gus Bradley and Todd Wash, the entire Jacksonville Jaguars staff, will be there uh, for the Senior Bowl, which goes going on Saturday. We visited with Carson's agent, Ryan Tolner, on our radio show Saturday. Uh, it's on the blog if you want to listen to that after you watch us. We gleaned a lot out of that. I think the biggest thing is that Wentz playing in the SCS championship game only helped his stock, something you and I chatted about in this very seat about a month ago, about could it possibly hurt if Carson played? If, if anything, it helped him uh, last month. Well, I think the question we wanted answered was, okay, what are the agents and what are those people, those handling type yep. of people at the NFL, what were they saying about Carson Wentz behind the scenes before the title game? Were they encouraging him to play? Were they not? Were they telling his father, hey, don't, don't make – we don't want him to play because we don't want him to get hurt. Yeah. You know, he's, he's got the, such a potential upside here with the, with the draft, and, and you're talking about a big signing bonus and a lot of yeah. money. I mean, that's a lot of money you're talking about. And Carson, I think, what impressed the agents and what's impressed a lot of people from what Mr. Toller told yeah. us is that he put that all aside and he went out and played for his buddies, and, and that's kind of a character, I think, character thing I think the GMs are looking at. Where do you th you've been around this now long enough going through the draft process and what in this the game actually on Saturday means little. What the scouts and what the GMs and the coaches are going to look at starts tomorrow. What in your mind after seeing him play the last couple of years, what will impress these guys? What stands out to you this, these guys you haven't seen well, yet? Well, it's one thing to look on film at a guy's throwing ability as as mechanics, how hard he throws, but when you're on field, you really get an idea of okay, how does that ball really zip in yeah. there? You know, you can almost hear it. You know, I mean, sometimes, yeah. you know, what's it like when he throws that pass across the hash mark, across the field? You know, how is his demeanor within the huddle, within the guys? Is he is he act like he can carry this team, yeah. or is he a small college guy who's shy? I mean, all those little factors, I think, you, you find out in practice. It also helps out that his starting left tackle is going to be there. This is obviously a big week for Joe Haig. I know Carson has dominated the headlines. But Haig is being thrown around, too, as a later round pick. Another guy, another left tackle that can be drafted for the buys. And this is a huge week for him as well. It's a huge week because I think you find really the difference in, in level of competition. The pass now. rusher style, yeah, no because, doubt. Because uh, you know, at the FBS level, that's the hardest position to recruit is those defensive ends and defensive linemen. Yeah. There are just not a lot of guys out there. So you get the real cream of the crop at the FBS level. So now Joe Haig, I think, in the Senior Bowl, We'll see how he does against those kind of type of Alabama, LSU type of guys. Also, it's interesting to note with Gus Bradley down there, and we visited with Ryan O'Halloran, who covers the Jaguars at our radio show uh, on Saturday, that Blake Bortles, who's Gus's quarterback, is the same agent that Carson Wentz has. And I think what uh, Toler told us, there's a lot of similarities between Bortles and Wentz that he threw at the combine, and that certainly helped his draft status. And I think you're going to see Carson throw in Indianapolis at the end of February. I, I think the theme was don't hold back. Yeah. Put him out there, yep. throw him out there. He has nothing to hide. He has, uh, he has this ability. He's got the size. He's got you know, the speed, I think, at least fast enough for the NFL. So throw them out there for all to see. Going to be fun to watch. Also, we should note, our signing day radio special is back next Wednesday from noon to 2 on 970 WDAY. We'll be back in the blog next week to get you ready uh, for the signing day of 2016. As it stands right now, Jeff, NDSU has 16 commitments. The last three have all been walk-ons. They're still waiting for some guys to come in, and there's been some other guys they've lost out to. A couple went to a MAC school, and India is still waiting to hear back in a few guys. This last week and a half is going to be huge to fill out this Right, class. I ran into Chris Kleiman at the uh, Morlock Benefit mm -hmm. on Sunday, and he goes, nine days, nine days. <laughs> like, you're counting the hours, aren't you? This is real grind time. Yeah. I mean, you know, when the season got over for a lot of the players on January 9th. Coaching staff, you just go right into it. February 3rd is when the season ends for them. And then they get about, I don't know, about a week off before they have to start planning for 2016. We'll get you ready. We have more from Carlin Dupree. Both you'll see it in the newspaper and, of course, on WDAY. And back with more on signing day coming up next week. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the Bison Video Blog.